Welcome to the Counter Offer episode. Perfect. 23? No, it's higher than that. 24. 25. We talk about two articles. Uh, he doesn't know two articles that I don't know, and I talk about two articles that he doesn't know. I don't know if I just explained that, but let's get right into it. We, we're talking about some states that are on the radar right now, okay? And number one, let's talk about Florida. Huh. Yes. So this is an article about states that seek to bar Chinese citizens from buying homes. All right. So it's been a trend lately. Listen to this statistic. All right. I looked into it. Chinese buyers spent $6.1 billion in home sales last year alone. Wow. $6.1 billion in home sales alone. They were the top foreign buyers in residential real estate from 2015 to 2020. 15% of home buyers were from China. 15% huh. of home buyers. That's wild. All right. So Florida, Robert. Uh, a lot of people over there in China. Yes. Well, a lot of money is over there. And, and people. Yeah, and people. Government uh, Ron DeSantis signed a bill last month that bars Chinese people who aren't U.S. citizens or permanent residents from owning property. Montana Governor Greg, I don't know, signed a bill last month prohibiting the sale of lease of agricultural land or anything near military assets from six countries. Lawmakers in other states, including Texas, Alabama, and Louisiana, are following suit. I'm 50-50 on this. Uh, first is government intervention is never the answer. But then people in the comment section vehemently disagreed with me in Florida. Florida real estate agents are happy about this. Really? Yeah. They, the top 10 most liked comments were, and went on the article as well, Axios uh, also were in favor of this. I don't know why, but what's your thoughts? That's a lot, those are big states right there. Florida, Texas, and then, you know, Continue. Yeah, no, I I don't know if I have an opinion on it. <laughs> uh, I can't decide. First time you don't have an opinion I, no, on something? I can't something? decide if I, which side of the coin I fall on. That's what I'm saying. I think it's good to have foreign investment. Uh, 6.1 billion. Little, it, I guess it really does depend on the property. I could understand, you know, being near a military base or being in agriculture or setting up a business, something along those lines. But residential. Uh, but just buying like a residential condo, I don't see what the issue is or why any broker would have a problem with that either. Yeah. Um, what they're saying is that they're driving up the prices, their cash. Yeah, no, that so makes sense. So that would be I understand downside. that argument. I understand it. Do I agree with it? Well, people want to come over to America. Not as many people want to go invest in China. Not that the We're Chinese not allowed. government would make it very easy to yeah. do that. But, you know. So that was another people, argument. People we can't there. invest there. So why would they invest here? I don't well, like who, that who argument. Would, who would want to do that? So, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Florida. And to be honest, if you're coming and you're buying a property, that means property taxes, closing costs, right. you know, like you're setting up a base, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm You're not, torn as well? I'm not for government intervention in anything. I'm not a pro-government uh, in real estate dealings, you know, especially on my next article. But I can't even find a good, you know, middle ground. I can't think of one off the top of my head. You know, maybe there would have to be like maybe charge more specific vetting. Yeah, no, you know what? That's what it should be. If it it's a foreign a... entity, you have higher closing costs. That's it. Yeah, simple as that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, positive article on Manhattan's luxury home market heads into the summer. We on only a have positive notes. Yeah. Well, you're talking about a controversial article about Chinese. <laughs> you should wait for the next one. <laughs> so, in Manhattan, here the city that we work in. Luxury home market heads into summer on a steady note. Last two weeks, last week's two biggest condo deals were in big towers. Central Park Tower yep. to be uh, uh, one, 34 million. Wow. Uh, then there was another on West End, penthouse deal on West End that was 25 million. So where in, do you know the building? Uh, 
not exactly positive on the building. I think okay. it might have been the 200 Amsterdam. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it didn't say that it specifically, sense. but it is a triplex uh, condo, five bedrooms, five bathrooms, two powder rooms, and 1,300 square feet of outdoor space. Well, the first building is doing pretty well as a new development. Central Park Tower? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's stunning. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. And you get great views, and they have a lot Amenities. of inventory, so the deals are, have been better. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been seeing that show up a lot on, you know, people's radar. So, great location, right by Columbus Circle. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, the easiest way to bring in new developments is the rising price of rent. Okay, we've been talking about it. We put it up for rent. You know, I had one on the Upper West Side. And at a point, it doesn't make sense to rent and make someone else wealthy. We had that conversation last week with an owner. She only bought. She never rented. She's like, I want to be the one that gets, say, rent collected or the one that has the equity rising instead of someone else. So it's a great time to buy. I was on a, a call yesterday with an international. She's coming here. She has someone else who wants to buy that's in London that wants to buy here. Like, honestly, it was the this is funny. You'll like this story. <laughs> the person is from London, pretty big city, major city, and they've never been to New York City and they're a grown adult. And it's not that far, but they went to visit and they're like, oh, I actually like this city a lot. And now they want to buy in the city. So I think a lot of people visit and they're like, I want a second home. I want a primary residence. It's an easy place to park well, my cash. Well, actually, that's a good segue into just a quick article. I actually picked three. So Ooh, there is one breaking rules that over here. said, uh, uh, let me get the headline. New study ranks New York as America's best city of 2023. <laughs> Paid for by... New York, the, <laughs> New York City government, <laughs> paid for by Governor Adams. Yeah. Uh, 61 million tourists are projected to visit oh, New yeah. York in 2023. That's up from 33 million in 2021. Obviously, nobody was traveling back then. 61 million people are visiting? Yeah. I'm telling you, like, when I was leaving the office yesterday, it was a scene... Out of, it's like there was extras in a movie set. There were so <laughs> many people. Apparently, it was crazy. Apparently 70 is the pre-COVID level that everybody wants. Wow. Well, all the hotels are doing just fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They said... Uh, the restaurants the only, probably like it. They said the only thing that is not benefiting from this is the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's staying in an office. That's what they said. Imagine converting uh, they mentioned that everything. to hotels. Rentals, restaurants, hotels. Yep. You know, uh, the sporting subway. events, subway, even. subway. So this, yeah, subway. It was and they even today. noted that the airports have had their expansions and their renovations that uh, you know make it even more welcoming to come yeah. into the city. Yeah, look at that. We've upgraded from our 1950 JFK and LaGuardia Airport. Talking about that, let's talk about the another controversial thing in California. They had the mansion tax. That was supposed to bring I in. I had a feeling that would be coming up. Soon. I had to bring this up, okay? Because again, I love the comments. You had a comment. I saw your comment. Oh, really? Yeah, I, it popped right up. I'm see that you didn't like it or anything. No, of course not. No, we don't go that that far. You know, our relationship. Yeah. The mansion attack was tax was supposed troll. to bring That's in. That's what he basically said there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually reported it to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I said this is an inappropriate comment. The mansion tax was so. This is California's mansion tax was supposed to bring in fifty-six million dollars. It brought in three point six. Okay, so the mansion tax is supposed to be used for the homeless situation in LA and throughout California. So any transactions closing in April, the city received. Guess how many deals? Five deals, closed that gave the mansion tax. Five deals. I'm sorry to be controversial and a jerk, but what five idiots waited for that month to do it? Well, what they said is everybody closed right before that, Maybe and the government nobody was paid. Like, there was I, an article, don't let those five people close. Yeah, there was an article that said it was in the L.A. Times, and it said celebrities, and it was like bashing celebrities who closed before the mansion tax, and they should have closed after the mansion tax. So then the mansion tax would go to this fund. The so-called mansion tax went into effect oh, April yeah, out of, 1st. Out of their goodwill, they should wait to pay more. Yes, I think I, agree. I think they should yeah. have waited under their goodwill because they are better people than we are. 
<laughs> the 4% over transactions, $5 million, and 5.5 over $10 million. Uh, that's a lot on top of paying the broker and the other closing costs. You're paying about 10%. You're paying a lot of money. It's expected to generate $672 million in its first year. Just think about that amount of money going to affordable housing and homeless programs. I am all for that. We need transparency on those programs. That's all I, that's, that's it. If this is the money that's being allocated, let's just see the transactions. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have been very public that are on the Bravo TV shows that have been going against this. Uh, so it's very interesting. We've had a mansion tax for years. Um, it's escalated to a higher one. We really haven't had a hit in no. high home sales. So because this is brand new in California, um, maybe, but- Well, I still don't know exactly how it works. So they take, I guess that money, I don't know how they allocate that money. No, I mean like, what's the tax? Is it a scale like ours or? No, it's just a set rate. For over anything over what? Five million, it's 4%, 10 million, it's 5.5. So okay. if you do the math, 5.5, 5.5. 5. 5. So you pay the broker 5%, 6%, that you're already at six and a half or 11 and a half percent of your closing costs. And then that's not even include, including attorney bank fees if you're financing and other state, city and local taxes. So you're like, you're up to like 12 or 13%. Well, the seller pays the broker fees. Yeah, but the sellers, so who, so buyer, would I rent? The buyer pays the mansion tax. So the only, the only reason this is gonna work is because they don't have the high-end luxury rentals like New York City. That's really the only reason it's gonna work because there's not a lot of homes I could see renting out in Beverly Hills consistently to celebrities. They have to buy the home or wealthy people, they have to buy the home. Uh, in New York City, you could rent a luxury condominium, $80,000, $60,000, you don't have to buy it. Uh, that's Which why- Which is probably less than the closing costs on, you know, <laughs> yeah big sale yeah so good luck but i like it that's I, why i like I've been that's why you should buy I, in new york city over la as i see these articles it's made me wonder uh how long until it wears off because obviously the first month following this everybody was closing oh yeah rushing to close that's but what i'm saying when is it going to start normal just like everything again, else you know? yeah because uh, we've been dealing with mansion tax here for quite some time yep uh another one d do, 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 do. NYC's new development shakes off seasonality. So this was a really interesting article about how the spring month is usually when uh, apartments are selling. And they talked about how COVID has changed the kind of seasonality of new developments. Yeah. Not only when they're going to be able to launch, you know, permitting, when, when these uh, apartments are able to, you know, come onto the market, when they're finished being built, when you're able to, yep, all, occupancy. Yep, all that. So it's uh, been interesting. However, they said uh, that it's gone up and down. You know, usually the spring is kind of when everybody rushes to the new developments and purchases, but now you've kind of seen it go like one month very good, one month down, yep. one month up, one month down. So uh, variability. Yeah, very, you know, it means that you can't just do all your deals in a couple months and then take the rest of the year off, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Demands of new development have been counterintuitively boosted by higher interest rates because would-be sellers in the resale market are hesitant to list and lose their lower rates. Developers have no issue. Yeah, well, you see developers paying for financing buy-downs. We were at one of those buildings, one Manhattan Square, and they're paying, what, 3%? Up to 3% of the financing for the first three years, yeah, I think it is, like that. every single month. That's a lot of money on these apartments, too, because that's, that's a healthy- well, How is a reseller gonna uh, compete with that? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and one of the biggest things that I've noticed is that because the rental market got so expensive, as we talked about earlier, is that normally I wouldn't be talking to buyers now that want to buy in July, but I have two that want to buy in July. Actually, I have three that want to buy in July, and that's that's not seasonal. So yeah, well, it's and it's weekly because it's, it's very a weekly. lower inventory environment. It also adds to that where people are like, whenever something comes on, I'm ready. You yeah. know, if there's a flood of inventory that comes onto the market, I'm going to look no matter when it is. Yeah. Uh, the new developments, it's always going to be like steady and available. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, those are the four articles. Hopefully everybody, five. five articles. Hopefully everybody liked that. If you guys like the ideas, send any over that you want us to react to because we're in the trenches of phone calls, buyers, sellers, new developments, renters, tenants, landlords, attorneys. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Though. I want to make sure that Eric's is as uncomfortable as possible in these videos. <laughs> so send it over, leave your comments, subscribe to the video or to the channel, whatever is easier. Have a great day and we'll talk to you